to iCloud. Okay, so we'll keep questions for the end and feel free to get a pen and paper. Sometimes that's really helpful when a lot of things come up so you don't forget at the end and we will have plenty of time for questions at the end. This should take about 30, 35 minutes, 40 at the most and we'll spend up to one hour if there's a lot of questions, okay? So if you don't know me, I'm Valerie Sayer. I'm the owner of Nutrition Connection Balance. I'm a registered dietitian, licensed dietitian nutritionist. I have an advanced exercise specialty. I keep my registered pharmacy technician, technician license up and I'm an international marketing director with Juice Plus. I've also been a Reiki master since 2003 and I've attuned, I have to count, I'll have to look, hundreds of people. I don't think it's been thousands yet, hundreds of people and certainly give thousands of people Reiki treatments. If you uh, need more resources, talk to the person that invited you and my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com has lots of free education and recordings like this under education, including four new just from this year on all different topics. So they'll be really helpful if, if something sparks you and you wanna get more information. If you don't know what a registered dietitian is, um, it means you have to go to school four to six years and then you have to do a medical internship or a master's degree and a medical internship. Then you have to pass a national test. And so registered dietitian is over any kind of nutritionist or anything else like that. And it also enables us to do things in hospitals and write in medical charts. Um, I specialize in hormones and prevention. I ran a compounding pharmacy for years. I did that medical internship in the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. Um, I'm a certified medical exercise specialist through ACE. Um, I am very passionate about exercise. You're gonna see why. Anytime you come to any lecture between, between that and nutrition, you're gonna hear it over and over and over how we're meant to move. But I wanted to get an advanced one because I work with a lot of athletes, professional and people that get injured. They're working with trainers, physical therapists, and I like to make sure I know what they're doing or if there's something else I need to look at, then that helps me help them navigate. I'm a Reiki master. I've done bodybuilding shows, all natural after my kids were born. I've done two full, three full marathons and multiple smaller races. I'm a mom of five, I'm an entrepreneur, author, and international speaker. But my passion is education. I think I came out of the womb, quite frankly, wanting to empower people. And that is really where I got lucky with really fabulous parents that had a, gave me a lot of love, but also weren't the healthiest in a lot of areas. And quite frankly, I just took that as another way to try to learn more. So I'm grateful for that. So today we're gonna to learn about facts, causes, prevention, how to slow the progression, hopefully, there's no guarantees, therapy foundation, nutrition and testing. And this is um, a Newsweek article that you might wanna read about how COVID attacks the brain. And it doesn't matter if you've had COVID or the vaccines or the boosters, millions of survivors now have chronic fatigue and other psychotic mood and brain changes, which I'll go over. So that's one thing that's changed for the entire world for the first time. We have a new stressor and something that does affect the brain. We also know that who has Parkinson's? Nearly 1 million people in the US are living with Parkinson's, which is more than a combined full diagnosis of MS, muscular dystrophy, or Lou Gehrig's disease. And this is expected to rise by 1.2 million by 2030. Most of the people that I know that have Parkinson's are actually males. Number of ages of people 65 or older with Alzheimer's, you can see it's pretty daunting. And I'm sure all of you here, if you're here, whether we're talking about health, moods, or cognitive diseases, know somebody that you love or a friend or a neighbor that has some of these conditions. Alzheimer's dementia, and when we're looking at just 65 to 74 years old, is 27% of the population. I have friends and colleagues that are taking care of two or more parents with Alzheimer's or dementia. So this is a real thing. And this is something that's affecting all of us because even if you don't have a family member, you might have a neighbor or a coworker and then they're missing work because of that. And it's very, very daunting because it affects everybody so different and it changes personalities and the type of care they need. We also know that mood issues and mental health is a large, large problem, it always has been. But now we know depression will be the number one cause of disability in the world. We know that COVID, as we wanna go back to this, I wanna put some information because sometimes we think, oh, I'm not worried about Alzheimer's. No one's in my family had that. But you certainly might know someone that has had COVID or a vaccine or booster, and they show 36 to 45% have cognitive changes from brain frog to new, I call it frog, 
because it makes you smile instead of fog. Uh, no one smiled. Yes, I'm not doing very well tonight. I see. All right, I'm gonna I'm, I'll up my ante a little bit. I know you're trying to be serious, but you got you got to laugh too, or you want to get too serious, or your brain won't work right. So, brain fog or frog, neurological changes, tremors, confusion, even apathy, which is just a blahness. Doesn't mean you have clinical depression, but just blah. You know, you just can't seem to do things or get excited about the same things you were passionate about. Extreme and chronic fatigue and exercise intolerance. Sometimes it goes away on its own. Sometimes it has not. And that's where some of the things that I'll teach you tonight hopefully will come in. Mental disorders doubled in the last 10 years in children aged 12 to 17. Doubled. And anxiety in 2021, 40 million people, about 18% of the entire population, has anxiety of some form, and some is very debilitating. We also know that by 2050, the number of people age 65 and older with dementia is projected to be 12.7 million people. And that means quite a few of us sitting here. So we certainly want to be proactive and learn what to do if you have someone that you love that already has it. So I, I'm only going to have one more screen like this, and we're going to jump into how to change it, because it's important to know the facts, because we always think it's not going to happen to me. And then we wait and then we're surprised. So my job is to teach you the facts, what to look for, prevention, and things you can start changing now to be proactive. You can also, if you have a lot of issues with mental health, whether it's anxiety, depression, or anything like that, then I have a mood lecture under education on my website. And again, that's much more detailed just on that particular topic. This is more of an overview of brain health because it's a lot you're gonna see just that we're gonna go through this with the basics and then you can get more detailed. So the key though, this is the key that if you remember nothing today and Marilyn's group, half the group could repeat this. This was good, that means I did a good job, is that the key to preventing all disease and that includes brain health is systemic inflammation. You've got to keep systemic inflammation down. So we're going to talk about what that means. Here's some of the, some of the reasons. By 2014, they had studied 15,000 children aged 9 through 18. So we're not talking adults. People think inflammation means when you've fallen down or you're 80 years old. Any age, here's 9 to 18 years old. And if they had higher inflammation, it doubled their risk and was the biggest predictor of depression by 18 years old. So why do we think our kids have such a hard time once they get to college? You know, think about, I think about the kids now versus when we talk about our parents or like my, my husband and his family, nobody had this problem in college. They might not, you know, they might have, you know, stressors, but it wasn't depression at this level. And COVID, certainly you see how that has changed the brain. Any kind of traumatic brain injury, whether you fall, have a motorcycle or accidents, because there were over 3 million just last year, this since the beginning of the year, that were hospitalized or in the ER for trauma to the brain. So we have got to take our brains very seriously. And then of course, pres prescription medications. And what I always recommend with that, we're not gonna get into that in detail today, is anytime anybody wants to put you on any injection or any kind of prescription, go and look it up. And if you want to be very conservative, look it up on even the, the drug database. They have to list the side effects and so on, so that you are aware of that. But what causes and what are some of the overview that absolutely contribute to inflammation, whether we're talking about children, adults, depression, or cognitive diseases? For women, they have a much higher risk of depression and anxiety, and that's because of hormone fluctuations. We're talking whether it's vitamin D, whether it's estradiol, whether it's cortisol, or whether it's another hormone like prolactin. So hormones change with menstrual cycles, without menstrual cycles, a good or bad day, and it's not the same every day when someone has a menstrual cycle. And certainly postmenopausal, it is the same. Hormones are not exactly the same every day. That's why you don't feel the same every day. The window doesn't go up and down as much, but that fluctuation is what causes women to have a higher risk of depression and anxiety. Poor diet. And this is one that everyone laughs about. They say, I eat fine. You know, I have my Pop-Tarts in the morning and I have my McDonald's at lunch and I have pizza for dinner. And look, I'm a normal weight. I know talking about your weight. You can have good genetics. I'm talking about the poor diet affects your brain. 
Trans fatty acids, that they're in anything a processed fat. Trans fatty acids, your body does not recognize, nor does your brain. Processed foods are the only place that trans fatty acids come. So if you eat a fruit or vegetable or a lean protein that's not processed, you don't have to worry about that. You can read the label and always look for hydrogenated oil. And then in the nutrition facts part, look for trans fatty acids and look for zero if you are eating anything in a package or processed food. Low phytonutrients. We have very poor food quality. If you look at the grocery store, it is shocking when I'm behind people or in front of people at the grocery store. It is 99% junk. I mean, it's frozen food, no fruits and vegetables. You know, even, even you don't even see a lot of seafood, even I live in Florida and that type of thing. It's amazing. And the phytonutrients are what in plant foods and their phytonutrients are what turn on and off different switches for disease, including things in the brain. A low lean protein diet, especially with aging, the older we get, the actual more protein we need. I was it was so wonderful to finally see, even in ARRP magazine, one of my patients brought to me, three patients in the same week took pictures. Oh my gosh, we're so ahead of the game, you know, because they're in their 70s and, and two of them in their 80s. And the lean protein finally in the magazine says, lean protein is way too low in our elders. That's 50 and older. You're supposed to have 25 to 30 grams for each meal. I can tell you that even when I was with my mom, you know, the last few years, we had to add a protein shake. There was absolutely no way she was getting enough protein. And then the gut brain connection, and we'll talk about that as a second brain in a minute. So I'll show you that. Here's the last resource in case you're an adult or you don't believe me, or you are more in a medical field is the inflamed brain. It's a little bit of a difficult book to read, but it is so fabulous. Unfortunately, he doesn't know a lot about what I'm talking about, but he goes over and over, even as a psychiatry professor, that it is systemic inflammation that causes all the problems. Even if you have trauma, it changes how the brain works. So you still have to have less inflammation and the things we're talking about. He talked about autoimmune diseases increase the risk of a mood disorder by 45%. If, if you're here and you don't know what an autoimmune disease is, it could be things like lupus or MS or type one diabetes or Crohn's disease. So there's a lot of autoimmune conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that. Um, infections increase mood disorders by 62%. Now this was a study in three and a half million people from 1945 to 1966. This was before COVID. So imagine that's the statistic and we had COVID to the last two years and the numbers that I showed you, it's very serious. We also know that in irritable bowel syndrome, cardiovascular disease and viral infections increase the risk for mood disorders. So now you hopefully know that the, what can trigger it or cause it and a little bit of what are parts of that. But now we're gonna to get to more details that will help you remember. And people are visual. This was the other slide that the business group remembered. So again, here's a normal brain at the top. Here's one with anxiety disorder. It looks very similar when you have a couch potato person on the top and you have an exerciser, whether it's yoga, Pilates, stretching, running, walking on the bottom. So the brain is 60% fat. So here's part of the key. You want to eat more healthy fat. And we're not going to argue about these. I'm just going to tell you over and over and over. I can give you book after book after book in medical testing, thousands of patients, wild salmon, avocados, nuts and seeds, and extra virgin olive oil are the right types of polyunsaturated fats that build up the brain. Now, I'm not saying everyone can eat them. You know, if you have IBS, you might maybe not, not be able to eat nuts and seeds or if you have an allergy. So again, I'm not saying you have to eat those foods, but I'm saying those foods build up the brain. And even when I do genetic testing, they never have seen a problem. You want to avoid those trans fatty acids. We talked about that a little bit. I can't stress this enough. It is shocking. I just bought a fish dip. Uh, it said, you know, fresh fish dip, mahi mahi. I thought, well, it's fresh. Why does it have a like a label with processed food, bought it so small, even my glasses, I couldn't get it, read it. I got it home. I used my magnifying glass. And yes, I do use magnifying glass too, because those labels are there to trick you. I'm telling you. And it had trans fatty acids and fructose corn syrup in a fish dip. Now the first ingredient was mahi mahi and it was, you know, it told even when it was caught and everything, but the other ingredients were terrible. 
So they took a perfectly good food and ruined it. So we've got to be very careful and read every single label. Just because it sounds good like a fresh fish, it, it doesn't mean it's good. Okay, so read the label. You want to avoid the trans fats and have zero in the nutrition facts label. And then in the ingredients, you want height, you don't want anything that says hydrogenated or fractionated palm. Okay, then you want to eliminate saturated fats and you want to limit it more and more as you get older. And you want to eat more of the healthy fats, red meat, butter, cheese, pastries, coconut, and limit whole eggs. I always say without testing, if you have three to four whole eggs and as many egg whites as you want, again, if you tolerate them, then that isn't a problem. But beyond that, it could be, and then some people have to eat less when I test them. It's a little bit different for everybody as we get older. And then you must supplement. And I'll explain why at all ages, you know, it just broke my heart when I was in an exercise pregnancy study and they were still arguing at that time about essential fatty acids don't matter for the baby's brain. I mean, we know that now, I've always known it. It's just, again, we don't do it. So how the baby's brain forms and their risk of things even like MS and autoimmune diseases are way higher if there aren't a good essential fatty acids from the mom. And again, two people are making that baby. So both of their DNA count. So what affects neurotransmitters? So when we think about, let's say serotonin, and let's just say depression, let's just pick one that's it's, it's, you know, a very scary thing, is that it's, we think about it, it's a brain disease, but the brain is mainly in the gut. Let me explain that the communication and most of the neurotransmitters that affect moods, memory, depression, anxiety are made in the gut, not in the brain. In fact, if you look up research from you know, 10, 15 years ago, when I started writing some of these, it was 40% of serotonin came from the gut. Then it was 60%. Then even about five, six years ago with another colleague, when she did a lot of research, it was up to 80. We're saying that 95% now of serotonin is made in the digestive tract. Do you see why I became a registered dietitian first? What you eat matters. And I'm not talking about your weight. You can be very unhealthy and be thin, and you can be very healthy and be overweight if you're eating the right thing. Everyone has different genetics. It's still what you eat matters. So the gut is a central nervous system links with the enteric nervous system. So what you put in your stomach and the right things that you get help with the neurotransmitters that help you with depression, cognitive functioning and signal. And so there's this whole cycle of gut life, I call it. Okay. And one of the things we are clear about is that you need at least if you're an adult, 10 to 17 raw plant foods a day, raw, raw, not canned, not junky, and not a banana a day. And that's a very large amount. And part of that is those phytonutrients and all of the different fibers directly also build up the microbiome and affect the gut that help also produce these neurotransmitters. The other thing is that when we talk about protein and it's not on the slide, but it should be, and I'll, I'll go through it a little bit more detail, but protein, every single neurotransmitter is made of protein. Now I didn't say bacon and ribs, okay? That's <laughs> right. if any men are listening, uh-uh. You know, so again, remember the first slide, right? I said wild salmon, right? Okay, egg whites, that kind of thing. And we'll talk about some powders. And then you also want high fiber. Fiber makes the gut healthier. Now there are people that have digestive issues that cannot have a lot of fiber. What we typically do there is make sure they get a lot of phytonutrients to try to offset that and do a probiotic. And that gets into a whole nother conversation because as Maria and Angie know, we have a lot of probiotics in our office. There are different kinds for different situations, whether you're an antibiotic, whether you have IBS, and different ones work for different reasons. You also have to have a lot of essential fatty acids. Those are the right fats. And it's the EPA and DHA and very small amounts of all the other ones. And when I do an essential fatty acid profile, there's pages and pages. People are like, I had no many idea. I had so many fats in my body. I'm like, I know it's, it's my favorite page. I call it my nerdy page. It's just, oh, big words and big names like cis monounsaturated and palmitic and, and polyunsaturated and trans fatty acids and icosapentoic acid. That's my brain because it helps me make sure what you're eating and what you're taking builds up your brain and lowers your inflammation. 
And then to keep it simple, you want less dairy, less gluten, less processed food, less medications and less stress. <laughs> yeah, right? How about that less stress part? Yeah, not, not gonna really happen. And we, we've gotta have the glory and the beauty with the stress to try to balance things out. And I always say, you can only control how you react. You can't control all the stress around you. That'll just never change, okay? So I promise it's gonna break it down each slide a little more. So this is a big slide, but I'm gonna keep it simple. And the only reason I put a lot of detail in here is people, well, this will be all the questions at the end if I don't that we wanna look at the foundation. Since it's something that I've worked with for many years, over 20 years, the foundation of my medical opinion at this point is the juice plus capsules or chewables, and those are 30 different plant foods, and I'll show you that in a minute, essential fatty acids, preferably with testing, but if not, I give you a few choices, vitamin D3, either a 2000 drop or one or 2000 capsules, without a blood test. With a blood test, you could be on 4,000, 10,000, 50,000. It's always based on individuality, but I've never heard anybody by, if you don't test, that that's the minimal that will not negatively affect your brain. The vitamin D, the only thing I want to say with this, and it's in a lot of my mood lecture, is it directly stimulates serotonin. So serotonin is what almost every prescription for depression affects that's why vitamin D is so important when we're talking about brain health directly, okay? It also, we wanna build up the neurotransmitter and all 25 neurotransmitters are made of protein, nutrition, diverse proteins, plant proteins are better, lean protein animals better, like wild salmon, okay? And then when we talk about the Juice Plus, we know that there was a first brain study as well as a microbiome gut study. And I won't go over all that because we only have so much time, but I just took this as a picture from the actual researcher releasing the information where they showed when you are on the Juice Plus capsules, two red, two green, two purple, or four, four, and four chewable, you have improved attention, memory, and executive functioning, increased processing speed of the brain, and subjects made less mistakes, worked faster, and worked more accurately. So again, when we're talking about cognitive functioning, that is because of the level of phytonutrients, because it's really hard to get 10 to 17 servings of raw fruits and vegetables a day. And even when people do like my vegans and raw foods, they don't need a variety. They're not tree ripened. They're not always raw. They're cooked. Okay. So we want to make sure we're getting the brain inflammation down. If you're not familiar with the juice plus, this is what it looks like the bottles. And when we look, it is actually food. It has a nutrition facts label. It's not a dietary supplement label. And it's the beauty of all those colors and the synergy that support your gut biome and your brain functioning. They're also one of the things that offset damage that happens from medications systemic inflammation, and all the things that assault the brain. One of the things that's interesting is if you start reading some books on this, you're going to see where nutrition comes in over and over and over. Some of the cognitive specialists and neurologists actually believe that the processed diet and the lack of nutrients is the biggest cause now of cognitive diseases. So again, we've got to just do better. So the Juice Plus directly also has three systemic inflammation medical journal articles. That means it's not my opinion. It's not someone else said so. It's not that a company said so. It is in medical journals. And this is very important because we wanna make sure that opinions don't count. It's facts. And it's also, if I don't know you and I've never met um, you know, Mary, let's say, and she's just listening to this and she gets on juice plus who, who invited her, I would never hurt her because there are studies that prove it's good for an adult, an infant, a child, an elderly, a Japanese. And the reason I say different cultures, because different cultures have different genetics. So it's very important that we give people the right things to help build up their system and prevent inflammation. You also want to take the right essential fatty acids. These are the two that I probably use the most. And again, I want to say, I test my patients and I do testing clinics. And you can certainly do a clinic. And if you don't, what I'd recommend is either take two to four 
Two will at least get you out of the red, but I'm going to tell you, I haven't seen anyone on two be in the, in the, in the green on just two juice plus omega. So if you, you can afford it, you got to at least take two. And if you don't want to test my recommendation, especially if you're over 40 or you have inflammation or higher risk of any kind of cognitive disease or functioning, take at least four. And preferably my office staff and the people that know me, my colleagues, I'm a tester. Because if you're a mom here or an aunt or someone that you love, or even when you have a spouse or partner, are you the same? Why would we need the same thing other than foundational things? So the essential fatty acids, always the foundation is fine in small amounts, but if we wanna fine tune it, that's what I recommend testing. And I'll show you that in a minute. Protein though is directly affect neurotransmitter support. It makes all neurotransmitters. You have more depression or anxiety, the more you need, not the less. The more athletic or stress or older or surgeries, the more you need. And quality matters. When we look at nutrient density, we want to look at all the nutrition in there. You don't want to just look at the label of how many grams, carbs, protein, and fat, how much nutrition is in there. And are there any studies showing that when you, when you swallow that powder and you mix it with water or almond milk, and then I swallow it, it does something for the good in a human body, not an advertisement, not in a chicken, not in a test tube. And the complete has two medical studies, including one from the MD, MD Anderson, um, Cancer Society, I don't know why I'm saying that right, sorry, MD Anderson Cancer um, um, Place. So what, what, help me out with that, why, why, why am I blank on that? MD Anderson Cancer Facility, all right, that's good enough. So, so anyways, as well as body fat loss. And we know that we want, again, we wanna build up the right, keep the right fats in our brain and we want the bad fats gone, right? Okay, especially as we get older. Because fat around the organs you have can be skinny fat that still causes problems. The quality and contaminant free matters. Because Parkinson's, if you didn't notice when I put that up there, one of the things with Parkinson's is we know that glyphosate and Roundup and all the different toxins that are on plant foods are a big contributor for cancer as well as Parkinson's disease. They've actually had lots of lawsuits with people that have been exposed to different pesticides and herbicides that have won because they were using their sprays. So we want to make sure that when you get a plant protein that it's been tested. And so the Juice Plus Complete is one of my all-time favorites, the only plant powder that has a perfect score. And that's very important because it's six different plant proteins. It has seven grams of fiber. And again, if you're very touchy about things, you can make it with water. Usually, even when I have people with very severe digestive problems, we can make it with water, even if they have to do four ounces twice a day. And then the Perform is a much higher protein, and that's two scoops as a serving is 25 grams of protein. So we're giving a, an example of this. And, and let me just go by something very non-controversial, like AAR Pair Magazine, which is just, again, the minimal, you know, the minimal is they're saying 25 to 30 grams of protein, at least three meals a day or more. Okay, so we're talking right 75 to 90 grams or more just from the three meals, not the other snacks and so on. Okay, and when we're talking about that one ounce of lean protein, so let's say it's scallops or it's wild salmon, one ounce is seven grams. So four ounces, right, four times seven is 28 grams. Okay, so four ounces of salmon for breakfast, then you've got your first one. I don't know too many people that are going to do that every single day right? Or for, you want anyone to eat chicken and green beans every breakfast? Probably not. So, and even two egg whites is seven grams of protein. One whole egg is seven. So again, when you're thinking about 25 to 30, how many egg whites you have to eat? A whole lot, right? So do you see why I have always been a proponent of a plant-based breakfast with a smoothie? Because you get all the phytonutrients, you get the protein, you get the medical studies, and you start your day out really strong so that if you lose your way and you have pizza at lunch or you don't eat lunch or you eat a snack at two, and that's all you do, you know that you've started really well. Okay. So again, the right proteins build neurotransmitters. You want to exercise. So you want to move. The brain is the most vascular organ of the body. It's hard to obsess when concentrating. So that's very helpful with anxiety and depression. It stimulates the feel-good neurotransmitter production from dopamine, 
to serotonin, to epinephrine, to norepinephrine. I can go on and on. Remember, there's a lot of neurotransmitters, 25 that I can measure right now medically. If you exercise outside, whether you go for a walk or you jump rope like I am here on the beach, there's a whole study on biophilics. If you can, even in my office, I have windows, but in previous, I haven't. Put a picture up of nature. Nature stimulates the good hormones. When you exercise, even a walk, a walk outside around your house and you're outside lights up the brain scans. Nature and movement stimulates your brain to work better. Laughter. I think everybody knows this, right? Anybody that's had a good laugh, right? What happens? You're not, you know, I mean, I remember my kids all the time. My favorite thing is I, I think I'm funny, you know, and they're like, you're not funny. Of course, they're going or they're turning around, they're trying not to laugh. So I am funny. So, you know, I mean, right there, it lightens the mood. It changes the circulation to the brain. Your gut has better response. So we want to laugh more. So when you're depressed, when you don't feel good, for goodness sake, get outside. I don't care if you have to lay in a blanket on a chair, get outside, get outside, move. Okay. And then Reiki, if you're not familiar with Reiki, the reason I mentioned this one is a lot of times when people have depression, anxiety, or, or cognitive diseases or Parkinson's or rheumatoid arthritis, they're in pain, you know, or they're not, they're not in their right mind, literally, you know, so sometimes it can be very agitated, very mean, unintentionally, very hurtful, you know, and it's very hard on the caregivers. So Reiki is one of the only healing modalities that have medical research for pain, for nausea, all sorts of things. What's so beautiful is if you learn it, you could do it on yourself. You could do it on the person you're caregiving to. And you need it as much as they do when you're a caregiver. So we want to have empathy for those caregivers. It's a hard job. If you want to be proactive, and I always recommend by the age of 50 and at the latest 60, and remember all the statistics running the millions by 65, is to get a neurotransmitter test. The best is a urinary measurement. And what's really wonderful is the science has come down huge in price and we can measure 25 different ones with also a creatinine marker. And here's the exact wording. They showed in clinical research, because it's amazing, psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists don't know this. They showed it was suitable for moderating, and moderate monitoring imbalances and may be particularly helpful in evaluating antidepressant therapies, whether you're choosing lifestyle, supplementation, herbs, energy medicine, or prescription. So it's very helpful for conditions, symptoms, medication, and supplement individualization. And it's also extremely helpful if we have a baseline before we get into the older ages, because Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, memory, headaches, systemic inflammation, migraines, fatigue, chronic mood conditions, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, rumination, I call it the round and round thinking, depression, anxiety, pain, and sleep, all are measured by neurotransmitters. So again, it's a very easy test. If you have even a very young child, they can pee in a cup and you just dip the, the paper in a cup four times on a day. So it's a very easy, non-invasive test for anyone, even someone that has cognitive issues. My goal is always one of two things, to get it before it happens, if it's a cognitive disease. And if someone's not sure what treatment they're gonna do, and especially if they've been doing counseling and they're trying to have a positive attitude and it's just not going well, it, there, it means there's something biochemical going on. For heaven's sakes, before you get on a supplement or a medication, why not measure it? That way you can choose the medication that fits you. Okay, so it's a really easy test to do. Here's an example. We won't go over this. Don't let it scare you. But again, multiple different neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and epinephrine and dopamine and even glutamate. Glutamate and glutamine directly affect the gut. It's one of the most important things. Guess what it is? Made of amino acids. Here, the same thing. Amino acids only come from protein. Tryptophan, serotonin, GABA. Most people know about GABA because if you don't have enough GABA, you have a lot of trouble with anxiety. Anyone, even if they have a, you know, a good life, it's they find they're more nervous or they have more roundabout thinking. And histamine is incredibly important right now with COVID and vaccines because histamine is an inflammatory response. So when I have people with rheumatoid arthritis and inflammation, we want to make sure we're looking at this whole group here because there's all different therapies to do, but I don't know if you you could have systemic inflammation and your histamine is not high like this person here. We give you a different therapy. 
So it's important to know each person and what they do. This is an example of the essential fatty acid test. Now there's multiple pages, but this is always the page I teach people that when you're on the juice plus omega, anybody I test, anyone I've ever had, ever, is in the red or orange zone on nothing. Even if they tell me, oh, I'm eating wild salmon twice a week and I'm having nuts and seeds every day, they are still in the red to orange. That's why everybody, adult, infant, child, pregnant woman, lactating woman, breastfeeding woman, men, elderly, all need to be on essential fatty acids. If there's anything you can do for them, it is essential fatty acids. I prefer you test. So let's say you take two juice plus omega and you go from here to here. We want you in the 10 to 12 is the preventative and the minimals eight to 12. So you see why I've tested thousands of patients, why I like to test because then I can find the right combination, okay? And again, if you don't wanna test, start with at least two juice plus omegas. If you're able to do four, two and two, or again, test or call our office and we can tell you what to do, okay? The other things when we look at measuring systemic inflammation, number one is the omega levels. There's also a level called highly sensitive CRP, HSCRP. You can do it by a finger stick. And when a doctor, you know, does a venipuncture, they can also, you can ask for it. This is a level of systemic inflammation. And I'm amazed people go to all these specialists and they have no idea if they have inflammation, but they have pain. So again, we wanna have something to measure so we know. And then there's genetic tests. The beautiful thing about genetic tests is there's five that are available right now to the public that's really affordable. And I really like for this particular seminar, the, the renewer aging one. And the reason is it has all sorts of lots of information with aging. But one of the things that's really helpful is it tells us if you're an above average like me, I'm a very high risk for systemic inflammation as I get older or any procedures, which I've already figured out even at a young age. So I am always measuring my systemic inflammation with omega and highly sensitive CRP. And it also tells us if you absorb the right fats or you have a bad response to the bad fats and it always can change genetically with age. So it's really helpful. And when you do genetic testing, you only have to do it once ever, by the way. It's not something you ever have to repeat. So you have the same genes in this lifetime, at least, depending on what you believe. So it makes it kind of easy. Okay. So again, people want to know, well, how do I change? How do I measure inflammation? This is the way to measure it. Three different ways. There's one other advanced test. It's called an interleukin-6. I, I probably have a dozen patients a year and I beg their doc doctors and rheumatologists to measure it when I can't figure out what's going on. It's not a very easy test to get um, unless you are really sick and they've done everything else. And sometimes I can beg them to do it. So these are very well known, okay? So as we wrap it up, hopefully you've learned some things. We wanna test if possible. We wanna prevent so that it's before. So again, if you do a neurotransmitter test, and then three years later, you start developing symptoms in Parkinson's. I can see what the difference is comparing you to you. It's very helpful. If you already have a condition, whether it's anxiety, depression, uh, OCD, severe pain, systemic inflammation, um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, very important to do the neurotransmitter test. Often what I see, let's say with uh, Parkinson's is someone that's put on the medication, they're so overdosed. So even there, then their dopamine's way too high. That puts them at other risks. So even if they choose to do medication and medication does not cure any of the cognitive diseases in any research that I've seen today, up to today, it only slows it. So the key is prevention and then try to slow it once you have it, okay? You wanna individualize if possible outside of the nutrition foundation, which again is vitamin D3, the juice plus capsules and essential fatty acids. You want to have nutrition density. Even if you eat junk food all day, start with one thing, start with a shake, start with an, you know, one whole egg, two egg whites and a cup of berries. Start somewhere. Okay. Replace one junk food in the afternoon with a, a juice plus fig bar. You know, don't make it so hard. Start somewhere. We always tend to do all or nothing. If you're only going to get older. Why not do something and work on it? Time. I don't want to hear the time excuse. And this is something that I don't have a lot of empathy for. I will be honest. And I continue to work on that part. We all have the same 24 hours. 
And how come when someone gets cancer or someone has Alzheimer's, they can all of a sudden find time to go to the doctors three times a week for years and take medication they said they never take. They found time then, didn't they? And I don't mean to be mean, but prevention and preparing food and making food takes time. And we all have the same 24 hours. And you can find the time if you understand the value, okay? Take the right therapies, reduce systemic inflammation at all costs. I don't care if you're 18 years old, nine years old, or 80 years old. Have empathy for people that are caretaking or have anxiety and depression it is so difficult. You know, and you see the numbers right now. And we really want to offer support. And you want to help if you have a cognitive disease, you need help with organization. You can't trust them to take things. You, they could be fine one day and take them. And the next day, they're throwing them down the garbage disposal. So it's really, you've got to have some kind of organization. And again, that means a family member or a loved one has to be willing to help. Same thing with depression and anxiety, to be honest. You know, they just can't get it together until they start getting that support. So we want to make sure that you're finding ways to have good support and then having community to get that help you need to get through it because it can happen to anybody at any time. And that's something that I've seen. One of my friends that's a psychiatric nurse said when she first started working downtown, she was shocked because she thought that all the people in the psychiatric ward were going to be someone that addicted to substances or homeless people. And she said half were people with trauma. They got a divorce and something just happened to their brain. You know, they had one tragedy after another. They were professional athletes. Athletes wear out everything. They need 10 times, two to 10 times the nutrition we just talked about. So they wear out the receptors and their gut in their brain. They've got to have way more nutrition. The more surgeries you've had, the more medical issues you have, the more nutrition you have to have forever. So we want to just be aware of those things. And then we always, like I said, offer last all year, uh, Marilyn, Patricia, Jody, and some of our colleagues and I uh, decided to try to give back in a very proactive way so that people could find healthy, positive communities with scientific facts. And that's the habit changers. We're doing it all of this year. If it continues to have a big gathering, we'll keep doing it. We bring in speakers. We bring in really good education on all different things. And we gather support and have a dedication to helping you with long-term changes, whether it takes you a year to change one small thing or you change 10 in a year to start somewhere. We all sometimes make two steps forward, one back. It's always the first Wednesday of every month. That's tomorrow. And tomorrow we have Deanna Price, as I mentioned. She's an incredible two-time Olympian and world champion. And it's just, she's just a beautiful person. So I'm just as excited about hearing what she has to say as getting to spend time with her. And she's volunteering her time twice, just like all of us are at, in the morning and at night. So hopefully you'll join us. So I am going to stop the share. I am going to stop the recording just because that way if someone says something that we may